evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the lovely introduction, and um, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come here and talk. Uh, it really means a lot to me. So when I was told about the theme, uh, the new wealth, which for me is embracing uncertainties, I was thrilled to come here and share my views about it, because most days of my life are full of uncertainties. Uh, so a lot of people judge athletes on the basis of their end results, whether that is whether they win or lose. Uh, but a very few of them know their journey. It's not always glamour, glitz, and fame. Like, there is much more to it. So let me tell you a few stories about the highs and lows of being an athlete. Um, I started my professional swimming at the age of 10 in 2010. And... Um, in 2013, I broke the national record and became the youngest, fast, fastest and youngest female backstroker of the country. And since then, it's been smooth sailing for me. Everything was very easy. Until 2016, when I missed the Rio Olympics um, due to some unfortunate events. So that's when I decided that, um, okay, I need to train harder. I need to train properly. So in 2017, I took a decision to shift to Bombay. Uh, for a period of three years, I signed a contract with the company and um, I decided to train there till 2020 Olympics. Um, I thought it'd be very easy. I mean, it's no big deal, you know. But when I moved there, reality hit me, you know. I guess the word move says it all. You move from your hometown to some other city. Um, because that's when I came out of my comfort zone. That's when I came out of the bubble. Um, and uh, in 2017, I was I was I started training there, and new city, new new house, new new friends, new swim team, and a new coach. Um, and I started training, and it was around after a month I realized that I wasn't training properly, and that's when I decided to get a full body assessment done. And uh, an MRI scan said I had a labrum tear in my left shoulder and was pretty bad. So, um, so the physiotherapist and the surgeons advised me not to swim for a period of three months. And I was devastated. I was like, I cannot stay away from the water because that's what I've come here for. What will I do if I'll not swim? And um, there's like, there's no choice. You, ha you, you can't swim anymore. So I was like, okay, let's get started with my rehab and then we'll see. So I had to pull out from a lot of events. I pulled out from the Asian age group. I pulled out from the junior nationals, the world championships. And slowly I realized I started losing faith in me. I stopped believing in myself. And I think I was depressed for a period of two months because I wasn't swimming. I used to only go to the hospital to do my rehab and then come back. That's the only, that was my schedule for around three to four months. And um, I think in, in these two months, I lost around six kilos and I was depressed. I, I was scared to start my day. I would go to sleep at any time. I was to fight with my mother a lot. And so one day I get up and I tell my moms, like, mom, take me back to Ahmedabad. I, I can't stay here anymore. I can't swim because I don't think I can get back. Mom is like, then the mom, mom, my mom told me, it's like, no, you have to stay, come out of the shoulder injury and then, then race once and then hang your suit. So end on a high. That's what she meant. Uh, I was like, fair enough, but then every day I used to find it difficult to go back to the pool and swim because I was not able to swim. Mom, is, I, I was really, I was insisting on quitting, but my mom said, one day you'll thank me for not letting you quit because this problem that you think is a problem is not a problem. There are, it is nothing in compare, uh, nothing compared to the life problems that your dad and I have faced or what other people are facing right now. And if you come out of this phase successfully, then I don't think there is, uh, I, I, I think, you'll be able to overcome each and every challenge that life has to offer you in the future. I was like, fair enough, mom. I'll recover from the injury. I'll race once, end on a high, and then I'm done. I don't want to swim anymore. And I guess today is the day when I'd like to thank my mom for not letting me quit swimming because I, can't, I really can't imagine, imagine what my life 
would have been if I was not swimming. So I guess one thing that I've learned is the sun will still rise every morning and the people who I cherish, love and respect will still be by my side in good and bad times. Um, I think whether it's work or sport, uh, one should always learn to enjoy the journey because I know in the end of my journey, I'll become a better person from what life has taught me. Um, there will be days where you'll achieve what you set out to do and there will be days where things will just not go the way you'd want them to go. But as I mentioned earlier, the sun will still rise every morning and there will be a new day to achieve and a new ray of hope. Um, and there will be uncertainties in everything you do. Most of the things will not be in your control and you just have to go out there, face your fears and get the job done. So last year in July, I was training uh, to, I was really close to qualifying for the Youth Olympic Games. So I decided to race in Germany. I was very excited. I was uh, really, I was privileged and honored to represent my country at the international arena. So I was really excited. My coach and I go there and um, we were shocked. We were stunned because all the texts were in German. <laughs> I mean, even the take your mark go was said in German and I'm like, how am I supposed to race here where the take your mark is in German? I was, I was extremely nervous. The 100 meters butterfly, 100 meters backstroke, the guidelines, the rules, regulation, everything was in German. My coach and I had to sit and translate each and every sentence, which was very frustrating. But um, so before my event, um, this is how I basically trained my brain. It's like I was really scared. What if I flicked on the block or what if I, you know, take an early start or what if I get disqualified? So before my race, I sat closer to the person who gives the start, take your mark, go. I sat very close to him. I listened to what he was saying in German and I kept playing that on my mind until my race came. And guess what, I got the fastest reaction times, but sadly I didn't qualify for the Youth Olympic Games. But nevertheless, I'm happy that I learned something new, even if I didn't qualify. So I guess um, this process of um, the uncertainties and everything, I guess the only way to make this process or this journey easy is to face each and every challenge or do each and every task with uh, self-confidence, self-belief and positivity because these were the three things that kept me going in my hard times. And in the meanwhile, I think it is very important to surround yourself with people who support you and challenge you and who are not afraid to tell you the truth whether it's good or bad. Um, for example, my coach is someone who is not afraid to praise me when I'm doing well and who's not afraid to kick me up the backside when I'm not, not out there giving my best. Um, I think you need that balance so, because it is what prepares you for life. There will be disappointments in life and the sooner you learn this, the better it is. Um, not each and every day of work is good. Not each and not, not all exams are good. Not all relationships are rainbows, cotton candies and balloons, but you just have to be grateful for what life has given you and just just be grateful, that's all I can say. And uh, I'm happy to say that in the last six months, I broke a national record and I got three gold medals at the seniors last year and I made a good comeback and I'm focused, happy and I'm happy and focused and I'm so glad I'm swimming, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm focused and happy and I'm sorry I'm fumbling right now. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's hope I, I'm training hard to qualify for the world titles this year and my dream of Olympics next year. And even if I don't achieve these goals, I know that I've put in a lot of hard work and I've given my best shot and I'll close this book and I'll begin with a new one, which I will hopefully also enjoy. Um, thank you so much for listening to me and um, I wish everyone good luck for the future. Thank you so much.